semiconductors are the backbone of society. And without them, society would collapse. They are in everything. Your computer, phone, toaster, and refrigerator. They are crucial for the military, the energy grid, banks, traffic systems, and aeroplanes. Basically, everything that uses power will have semiconductors in them. And for decades, challenges in the semiconductor industry have gone mainly unnoticed by the public. This changed drastically in 2020, when, in large part due to the pandemic, the world entered a massive global ship shortage that has yet to pass. The global ship shortage has caused massive downstream problems in nearly 200 industries, from the automotive industry to the mobile industry, and many companies are now struggling to secure enough chips to meet the customer demand for their products. So what are semiconductors? In short, conductors conduct electricity, insulators resist electricity, and semiconductors are in between. They conduct based on their environment. By applying heat, light, electric current, or as in computers, electric fields, semiconductors start conducting electricity. And this property is extremely useful in electronics. Chips are made up of semiconductor switches called transistors. The switch between conducting and insulating electricity. A chip the size of your fingernail will have billions of transistors on it. And these transistors are the building blocks of digital code. Electricity passed through a transistor will be recognized as a one. And if not, it will be recognized as a zero. Nowadays, chips are created by taking silicon wafers and printing a circuit of transistors on them using a process called photolithography. The wafer is then developed similar to how film is developed in photography, and this leaves behind a pattern that becomes the circuit. Printing the transistors allows for smaller circuits than if the transistors would have been built from individual parts. And semiconductors are rapidly shrinking in size. Current cutting edge semiconductors that are in commercial production are five nanometers, but Taiwanese TSMC plans to put a three nanometer semiconductor into commercial production in 2022. The smaller the width of a circuit, the shorter the travel distance of an electron, which improves the efficiency and performance of the chip. So if we want more powerful electronics and keep innovating, we need smaller ships. Integrated circuits, ICs or chips, represent roughly 80% of the over $400 billion semiconductor market and are what most people associate with semiconductor technology. Among ICs, there are a multitude of semiconductor technologies, short-term memory, long-term memory, general purpose processors, and so on. Th there are more than I have time to list. What's important to understand is the production process behind them. The process to produce semiconductors is crudely defined in three steps, design, fabrication, and assembly and test. Integrated device manufacturers, or IDMs, like Intel and Samsung, perform all these steps in-house. And this has historically been the dominant business model. However, with the rising complexity and cost associated with cutting edge integrated circuits, companies have increasingly started to focus on specific steps in the process and outsourcing the other steps. Companies like Qualcomm, AMD and Nvidia solely focus on chip design and are called fabless. Once a chip is designed, the fabless will then outsource the fabrication to a foundry like TSMC, who will manufacture the chip. The fabless works very closely with the foundries along the way because chip design needs to fit the foundry's particular production process. Switching the production process equal a complete chip redesign. After fabrication, foundries can either test, assemble and package the chips themselves or they can outsource this to an OSAT, Outsourced Semiconductor Assembly and Test Company. So while Intel and AMD both produce general purpose processors with the x86 infrastructure, they have very different business models and supply chains. Intel is a so-called IDM and does all steps, design, fabrication, and assembly and testing in-house, while AMD is a fabless. They only do the design and outsource fabrication to TSMC and assembly and test to a company called SPIL. The increasing complexity and need for innovation of semiconductors have led to extreme specialization, forcing both companies and entire countries to focus on limited parts of the semiconductor value chain to stay ahead. This means that today no country is self-reliant in the production of semiconductors. While this has made the value chain highly efficient and innovative, it also makes it very susceptible to disruption. The semiconductor value chain relies heavily on free trade and close collaboration across borders. All it takes is one part of the process to be delayed for the entire production to halt and with ripple effects across nearly every industry on earth. And there are more than 50 points across the entire supply chain 
where one region holds more than 65% of the global market share. Semiconductors are now the world's fourth most traded product and are at the heart of the intensifying US-China tech rivalry. In fact, in 2019, China imported more semiconductors than they did crude oil. This has led to semiconductors becoming an increasingly important strategic asset in geopolitics, and politicians will exploit choke points to cripple adversaries. A shortage of semiconductors is one of the biggest risks to a country, since it can cripple its entire economy. Through export bans and aggression, governments are denying foreign countries access to sufficient amounts of semiconductors. The risk of not being self-reliant is starting to weigh heavily on many countries and industries. This has led to an increasing number of countries, including China and the US, wanting to increase their self-sufficiency and bring a larger part of the production back on shore. But this will take time and be expensive. To cover the total US semiconductor consumption with onshore capacity, the US would require over $400 billion in government incentives and invest more than $1 trillion over 10 years. And that doesn't take into account the rapidly increasing demand for semiconductors or the exploding cost of innovation. Over the next 10 years, the industry will need to invest about $3 trillion in R&D and capital expenditure globally across the value chain in order to meet the increasing demand for semiconductors. Moore's law states that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles every two years, though the cost of computers is halved. The only reason why we've been able to follow Moore's law for this long is because of hyper-specialization and localization. The trade-off to bringing more of semiconductor value chain onshore will most likely be a more reliant supply chain, but one that is more costly and slower to innovate.